Welcome to Excel Array Formula Series number 14. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link. Download the workbook Excel Array Formula Series 1 to 14. Hey, number 14, this is going to be really complicated, and it may take at least two parts, so it'll be like a 20-minute exercise here, but it's worth sticking through and watching. At the end, I'll, I'll uh, go through formula evaluator and kind of analyze how to not only build a complicated array, but how to learn how to understand it. Hey, here's our situation. We have a stock example here. We have a probability of state of economy. We're going to have boom, good, poor, bust. There's the pop probability. And we have weights of stocks in a portfolio. And then we have returns, estimated returns for stock A, if any one of these states occur. Uh, stock B, the return, stock C. Now the first part of this is we're going to do uh, the individual return and the individual standard deviation for each stock. So the expected return for each stock and the standard deviation. Then we're going to go on to a much more complicated calculation, which involves a lot of steps. We're going to calculate the return for the whole portfolio and the standard deviation for the whole portfolio. And that's where there's so many steps that if you can take the time to figure out an array formula, boy, does it save a lot of space in your spreadsheet. All right. Well, let's do this one. This is a pretty straightforward one. We need to multiply each one of these returns times the probability and add them up. And we're going to create one formula and copy it over. Alt equal is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum. I want the four above me times the probabilities, and I want to lock them going to the side. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, F4. Dollar sign just in front of the column. And then don't forget, this is an array formula. Hold Control Shift and enter. And then I'm going to click and drag this over. There, very quickly, we avoid a few steps and calculate our uh, expected return for an individual stock in our portfolio. Now we want to come down here and we want to calculate the individual standard deviation for stock A, given our uh, estimations of uh, different states in the economy and different returns. Now in order to calculate standard deviation, you actually have to take each one of these returns and subtract the expected value that gives you the deviation, square each one of those deviations, then add them up and take the square. Oh, multiply each one of those deviations squared times the probability, then add them up and take the square root. So we'll start with square root equals square root, open parentheses, and then sum, open parentheses. And now we're going to have to calculate the deviation, square them, and multiply by the probability before we sum. I'm going to guess that there's a couple extra parentheses there. And then I want to take this range right here minus a single value. Now what this does, if we put a close parentheses right there, is this, there's a range minus a single value. So inside parentheses means that it will subtract this value, expected value, from each one of those and store it as four different values. Now, that's just the deviation. Now we need to do caret square and then close parentheses. Notice that right there with that parentheses around that and that, because there's a squared, four values in here, it will square each one of those and store them as four values. So those four values then need to be multiplied times these probabilities, and that I need to lock, because when I copy this formula this way, it needs to be locked on the probabilities. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, F4. Finally, we get our closed parentheses on the sum right there. So that every single thing inside of there will be an individual four values that the sum function will then add up. Finally, a closed parentheses and Control Shift Enter. Now we uh, did Control Shift Enter. Let's point to the fill handler when we see our angry rabbit. That little crosshair. We click and drag. Now I'm going to check by clicking in the last one and hitting F2 for edit mode. Oh, there it is. We got the right ones there, the right ones there, and the right ones there. Now, if I put this into edit mode and then hit enter, what happens? Uh-oh, value. Don't forget, when you go to look at it, you always have to enter it back, control shift, and enter. Now I want to run formula evaluator on this and let's, so we can see how Excel analyzes all this. 
and uh, actually evaluates a, an array formula. Formulas, formula auditing, evaluate formula in 2003. Tools, formula auditing, evaluate formula. In all versions, the keyboard shortcut that works is Alt Tuff. Alt T U F. Oh, this is so cool. I don't know what we did before f evaluate formula. Well, we used the F9 key. That's what we did. Let's look at this here. I'm going to click Evaluate. Notice it's underlined that, so that's the first thing it's going to do. Now, it got that number right there. Now, it's looking at this whole array of four values minus that. Click Evaluate. And see how that stores one, two, three, four values? So we had an, a range of cells minus a single value. That tells an array formula that, hey, I want to do this operation on the single value to each one of the values in the array. So there it is, four. Now it's got an array there, and it's... Uh, got a caret 2, so when we click evaluate, it extends it to there, and now it will do the caret 2. It will actually square each one of those. Again, there's four values in an array and a single operation. Boop, and there it has it. Now it's looking at that array, and it needs to multiply times the probabilities. It's now got it all underlined. Click evaluate. It just multiplied each one of those, so the next thing it can do is sum, and finally take the square root. That is just amazing. Now that's the expected value and the standard deviation for each individual stock given our estimations here. Now the next bit of this is going to be uh, a little bit more complicated. We need to calculate expected returns for the portfolio and the standard deviation.